We have a common saying in Nigeria, and it comes from one of Nigeria's greatest musicians, Mr. Fela Kuti. Water no get enemy. So true. March the 22nd every year is World Water Day. And the theme for 2021 is valuing water, this inexhaustible necessary resource that makes up over 70% of our planet. How is something all around us a scarce commodity? Today on Dateline Abuja, our feature story looks at water scarcity and its many negative ripple effects, including the role it plays in keeping Nigeria at the embarrassing position of number one in open defecation on planet Earth. 47 million people in Nigeria practice open defecation regularly, and it's costing us $3 billion every year. In our interview segment, we speak with a water sanitation and hygiene expert, Patricia Obra, in our quest to try to get some answers to these questions. And as we do every week, we have our Abuja wrap. This is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Megwa. According to the United Nations, the value of water is about much more than its price. Water has enormous and complex value for our households, for food, culture, health, education, economics, and the integrity of our natural environment. If we overlook any of these values, we risk mismanaging this finite, irreplaceable resource. Earth is a water planet, so how are its occupants facing water scarcity? Harnessing this resource has been a challenge for years, especially in countries like Nigeria. We'll get to that shortly, but first, Nigeria's presidential villa was a beehive of activities this week, with visitors pouring in from all over the country, including the Benue state governor, who came to see the president after the attack on his life. And the vice president, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, had an incredibly busy week virtually. Take a look. Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State is warning that if the insecurity challenges in the country persist, the 2023 general elections will not hold. Governor Otom stated this after he visited President Muhammadu Buhari at the presidential villa following the attack on his convoy. Without security, there can be no meaningful progress going on. And so it is important to put heads together, do the things that are lawful, let us protect the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria so that everybody will be secured. Let there be equity, fairness, and justice. That is what I stand for. That is what I'm fighting. I want to also appeal to Nigerians. 2023, yes, to a politician is not far, but it's still a long way. If we secure our country and everything is working fine, then we can talk about 2023. The president was also visited by the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Dimeji Bankole, and former Ogun State Governor Otsumba Benga Daniel. Both men have just defected to the All Progressives Congress. They were accompanied by Governor Meimala Buni of Yobe State, who is also the chairman of the APC Caretaker Committee, as well as the governors of Jigawa and Kebi States. Another set of visitors that the president received were diplomats. Six envoys came with their letters of credence and the president used the ceremony to ask the international community to collaborate and address some of the major threats across the globe. The envoys are from Gambia, South Korea, Slovakia, Australia, Bangladesh, and Guinea-Bissau. Some prominent Nigerians also visited the president, one of them, former military head of state, General Abdul Salam Yapubakar, who is the chairman of the National Peace Committee. He did not speak to the media on his mission to the State House. In a separate visit, the new chairman of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, General Buba Marwa, met with the president. He too did not state the aim of his visit to the State House. Meanwhile, Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbajo has had his fair share of meetings, albeit virtual. One of such is an interactive meeting with some of the beneficiaries of the National Survival Fund program, where he called for calm because of those who are yet to receive their payments from the scheme. The success of the scheme so far is bound to you know, lead to future interventions. It may not be uh, this type of intervention, but there will, certainly will be other interventions. The vice president also presided over the Economic Sustainability Committee, where it was revealed that at least 2.1 million jobs have been saved, including new ones created, while over 4,000 kilometers of federal and rural roads are at least 30% completed since the commencement of the Economic Sustainability Plan months ago. 
Professor Simbajo also delivered the keynote address at the 19th meeting of the National Council on Development Planning. He explained that Nigeria's national development plans must promote economic diversification, be modern, ambitious, realistic, flexible enough to absorb shocks, and adapt to swiftly changing national and international conditions. The vice president was also at the official launch of the Nigeria Sustainable Development Goals FinTech Hackathon, where he stated that the present administration is accelerating interventions, especially those under its economic sustainability plan. I think that with, uh, with, with uh, innovations, especially uh, some of the uh, great inno uh, fintech innovations, we're beginning to find that even the unreachable places can be reached with credit. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's amazing how, you know, uh, uh, these uh, 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 farmers, especially in the hinterland, many of whom are illiterate, are actually able to relate very quickly to, uh, to, to, to fintech and to all of the various... Uh, uh, the various innovations around fintech and access credit, access money uh, directly. Sooner or later, Nigerians will begin to pay the actual cost of premium motor spirit as the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation laments over the burden placed upon it by an ongoing subsidization of the cost of the product amounting to 120 billion naira every month. The group managing director of the NNPC, engineer Mele Kiari, made the disclosure at the fifth edition of the special ministerial briefings coordinated by the presidential communication team. Welcome back. Now let's dive deep into the ocean of water scarcity. Nigeria has 215 cubic kilometers a year of available surface water. More than a third of Nigeria's states are named after their water sources. Despite this, only 19% of Nigeria's population has access to safe drinking water. And the major cause of water scarcity in Nigeria is pollution. The nation's capital is not exempt from this disappointing fact. In our feature story, we look at water scarcity in Abuja, causes and possible solutions. Water has become a precious commodity for residents of Durumi as water scarcity hits parts of the nation's capital. This stream is the only source of water for residents of the community and they've gathered here to carry out their domestic chores. Apart from this stream that we are uh, at this infection, no using water in the media. So no tap this in uh, no this in no tap, no this in bowl. Since on Saturday we are suffering for water, no water to eat, to use and cook and eat. We are suffering, standing here waiting for water for a long since on Saturday. We don't have water. Please, let uh, government to help us so that they will bring water for us in Jurumiye. We are coming this river and fetching water, dragging quarry, fighting uh, because of to get water to eat and bath and washing clothes. Since last week we start suffering about water, we don't know whether we are still using the water. Look at the water we are using now, it's not good. Like some of us now, maybe I don't talk, I will not talk on my own, but some people now, they, 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 are, they have sickness. If they use this water to drink or do anything, cook, it can bring any more sickness for them, it's not good. So we should, you should help, help us there, Buhari, to our beg, allow us, free the water for us, because no water, no, no water, no light. It's not good. So. Esther Badu operates a restaurant in the community and the scarcity is affecting her business. The small baby soup I'm cooking now, how much jerrycan am I going to use? Like five. That's almost 1,000 naira. It's too much. Two, 200 per jerrycan. It's too much. If they are working on it, let them do it. Let them help us to repair the pump or they should power water to us. The scarcity also extends to some highbrow areas in the federal capital city, including the APO legislative quarters, which houses some members of the National Assembly. This is National Assembly quarters. This is where big men, they live as a no water. No anybody complain. 
Because some people get bohul, some people never get bohul. Now the people where they get bohul, now then they go help the people where they don't have bohul. So what thing government was supposed to do, make them help people, make them bring this water back. Whether the water have problem, make them, make them say to the matter, make them help people. Because you get another people where they never even carrying water for help, for their life, for these quarters. So you go see people there around. In the morning, in the evening, you go see people there around with bucket for their hand, then they looking for water. So may government do something about the issue. The residents here rely on their security guards and house helps to source for water. For them, getting water has become a Herculean task. But the situation of the water is too much. Tomorrow is making it one week. We don't have water. Pure water, one bag is 200 naira. How can somebody afford one bag? If you have five children, how many bags will you buy a day? Pure water is 200 naira. Jerry can of water is 150-200. Not talking of food, though. You can't buy food. You can't buy water. You can't buy pure water. Please, we are calling on the government. They should have mercy. And remember that there is God, though. Please, this is difficult for the, for the masses. Look at that guy now. Look at the water I carry. That water is one, 200 naira. How will you buy for water? 800 naira. It's very bad. The water situation is very bad. We are suffering almost a, a week now. Um, I remember the day for yesterday, I go board one truck. That is 12 jerkan, 2,400 naira. From now, even now, even now, we don't see the water to buy self. To say I see the water, I will buy more than this 2,400. But I didn't see the water. We are so far of water. Please, we are, begging, we are begging for government to help us in these quarters. Kubwa Satellite Town is another area that the scarcity is having a major effect on. Residents have to depend on good-spirited individuals to be able to get water. This means some would have to leave their offices to get water for the family. I live in Kubwa, and we have been having these water issues since last weekend, about a week now. We have been suffering because of this uh, uh, shortage of water or lack of water in this axis. Definitely I'm supposed to be on my way to work, but you can see what, um, what one is passing through. You have to come out look for a place to fetch water and take care of other things before going to work. Ordinarily, it's not supposed to be so. So you can see that it is really affecting one's activities. We've not been finding it easy. Sometimes I'm supposed to be in office now. But because we need water, I have to rush back home to see what we can use. After the first uh, warning, they gave us a uh, first warning that within three days it will be restored. Then we waited, that one was restored, as uh, said, uh, around 11 p.m. on that Sunday. But two days later, the water just stopped. We were not, we were not seeing water again without any uh, information. The acting general manager of the FCT Water Board explains that the scarcity was caused by a burst pipe, which affected some parts of the nation's capital. It was really unfortunate that we had a pipe burst in the lower Osman Dam, that is where we produce water. The pipe burst caused that shortage because the pipe is a pipeline that's supposed to take water from lower Osman Dam itself, that where we have the raw water, send it into the treatment plants. So, in the process of doing that, the thing just got bust like that. It's a mechanical thing, so nobody expected it. Immediately this happened, we mobilized to site. The first plan we had, plan A, failed because they felt they can just bring out, when they had discovered the real problem, they brought it out, tried to make some repairs. But unfortunately, one of the materials that was to be used to couple the pipe was not in the country. And uh, it was only out of the country we could get that, which was impossible because France had it, but they are locked down, as I speak with you. So we tried to do other things. But unfortunately, last Sunday, after putting, we were rejoicing, oh, we can restore water immediately. We tried 
the process and we have the same problem that leakage we have to shut down again so now we have come to plan b as to do some welding and other engineering uh, network to make sure that we restore water the fct water board is pleading with residents to exercise some patience as engineers from the board are working to fix the problem and restore the supply as soon as possible My guest on the program is Patricia Obro, a water sanitation and hygiene expert and the deputy head of WASH Department of Action Against Hunger. She talks to us about the focus of World Water Day 2021 and the plans to achieve Sustainable Development Goal 6, the problem of open defecation and Nigeria's plan to be open defecation free by 2025. Patricia, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you so much. And let's begin from the nation's capital. For almost a week, you know, we've had people who are not able to access water. And this will also resonate with many communities across the country because, you know, in Abuja, it's easy for us to think that everything is fine. And then yeah. lack of water sometimes can be an anomaly, you know, because we are used to having water. But in recent times, it's become a problem in the FCT. You know, that, how much of the problem is water supply in Nigerians' urban cities? Oh, well, this is really a huge problem um, in urban cities in Nigeria uh, because there are various factors that really can lead to that. Uh, one, which is very common, is urbanization that is migrating from the rural areas into the urban cities. And you see, when we have more population and urban areas, it means the demand for water is really is going to really be huge. And uh, really, that is one of the huge problems we have. Um, secondly, there's also the issue of uh, water quality. So when we talk about water quality, it's, um, this really affects, uh, it's really affected by climate change, uh, which we are all, um, all experiencing all over the world. So um, that is something that uh, is really very serious currently. And um, if you see, sometimes the seasonal times really differ um, compared to what it used to be. We have also um, issue of energy scarcity. You know, energy scarcity is something that is um, really one of the, biggest problem we have and what is happening now so many countries are trying to look for alternative source of power um, and which i feel nigeria needs to key in because the different regions of the country have different uh, capacity to really uh, be able to generate their own uh, source of energy so i think when we key into such um, different um, resources we'll be able to get water to our various houses um, another thing which is really very key, but um, people tend to shy away from, is deforestation. Really, the climate change, as I said, affects uh, most of, of our communities, our states, our urban areas. And people tend to fell trees as much as possible, but which, and don't really plant trees. And this water, um, they, they know, these trees, they try to store water which helps, which can really help us in our urban areas. So planting of trees is something that we really need to key in uh, to be able to generate um, groundwater and to um, get this water in our various um, urban centers. The Sustainable Development Goal 6 is one of the key focuses of World Water Day this year, water and sanitation for all by 2030. But only 19 percent of Nigeria's yes. population has access to safe drinking water. What can governments yes. do to address uh, this beyond setting up mini water schemes all over the communities, uh, which hasn't really improved the situation? What more should governments be doing? Okay, for, uh, for, for me, um, that is really something that is very key. Uh, government really need to invest more. They need to invest more in um, infrastructure, which water is part of it. Um, allocate budget, especially at um, the local government and state level for water, for water and small water towns. Because right now, when you come to various states, you see that this really exists in, uh, in various LGAs. So we can look at small water towns as part of um, what uh, government needs to really invest on to be able to, because most of the pipes and uh, um, facilities on ground are already dilapidated. So government needs to invest more and budget more for that really to be resuscitated. Uh, we also talk about um, strengthening uh, LGA um, bodies, institutions. 
the local governments do have a whole lot of work to do, but they cannot do that when they are not really strengthened. That is, um, money and budget needs to be given to them and also released because some state, at some state level, we have a budget already allocated to LGAs, but they are really not adequately released. So this really needs to be put in place. There's something too that is very paramount that in Nigeria, we really lack that, that is operation and maintenance. Some, before now, um, I guess from our grandparents, we hear that um, this, this was really not a very big issue because we had our water running from our water boards and things like that. But some of these things are really dilapidated and they really need operation and maintenance. So for me, that is something the government needs to really key into and really invest more to be able to operate and maintain some of this infrastructure we have already on ground. One of the problems with uh, inadequate water supply is that it adds yeah to the problem of open yeah. defecation. And yeah. you know, there have been so many, pro there's, there's actually a proclamation <laughs> stopping people uh, from defecating yes. outside, but it, it just isn't working, Patricia. What, yeah. what do you think is making this fail? You know, if we've been dealing with this open defecation for so long, at some point, it was a national yeah. embarrassment to the country, uh, but we it still is. have this going on and it's tied a lot to poor yeah. water supply, especially in rural yeah. communities. What could be done about this yeah. situation? Uh, for, for this, so many things really needs to be done. We are number one in the world right now. That is really devastating. Um, right now- that is, I, that's, said, I think um, that's something Nigerians need to know. We are number one when it comes yes, to open one. defecation in the defecation. world, which means that yes. we are the number one country to have people yeah. defecating outside. Yes, that is true. So um, just like as I was saying, as at November 2020, um, we had um, only 33 LGAs in the whole country that are open defecation free. And that means um, if we are looking at open defecation free nation as at 2025, it means every month uh, we, we need to have 13 LGAs out of the 774. One remaining or 774 LGs, and um, we have um, 741 now remaining as open defecation. We need to have 13 LGs each month open defecation free to be able to achieve that. Um, but really, um, the federal government have been doing its best. But for me, one of the things that the state government needs to do is to really domesticate what the federal government is doing. So when we talk about uh, Op, um, open defecation free roadmaps. Um, most states have really not keyed, keyed into it. So that needs to be adopted and really uh, domesticated at state level. Uh, we talk about um, leg compulsory legislative advocacy. So there was already a bill which has passed second reading for um, prosecuting um, persons who um, defecate openly. So this the federal government is doing, but the states at state level, the states and the local government needs to really take um, important uh, measures to make sure that this is really domesticated at state level and at LJ level. Now, the, the, at, uh, the traditional rulers at local government levels, they need to play a key part in this and they, are really, they can really motivate and um, uh, they can motivate their, their, their citizens to be able to build their own latrines. But the state government needs to put a whole lot of effort at this. Um, also, funding. Funding is important because if you look at what Indian did, Indian um, was able to build latrines for citizens. Um, but for us, we are trying to advocate that um, we use our local materials. We find within our lo locality to be able to build community simple latrines, like we have what we call the VIP latrine, which is ventilated improved latrine and pit latrine. And uh, this is um, something you can do uh, with the resources that you can find within um, lo our localities. So for us, uh, we need to do this holistically as partners, as government, as individuals, it's our countries, our nation. So we need to do this together to make sure that this really is attainable. And I believe So can we do it? Can we end open defecation by 2025? Let us know using the social media handle showing on your screen. 81% of Nigerians is a massive number not having access to safe drinking water. It's unacceptable in a country where the Niger runs through. Harnessing this abundant resource and making it work for us is the right way to go. And the steps to get that done should be immediate. The planet is not getting any younger. 
That's our show today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Megua. See you next time.